this is kind of more a more skate specific rule of composition but it's about giving your subject enough ground and that means not cropping the photo at the very bottom of the stair or at the very bottom of the bank but giving it a little bit of room to roll away as you can see in this photo of John Rattray it looks fine if you were to crop this tightly right at the bottom of the bank but if you see if you give it a little bit more room he look, he's higher up in the frame, the obstacle looks bigger, uh, you get a better result. You want to always err on the side of making the obstacle look bigger and the skater looking more badass. If you want to crop, crop from the top. Another way to get clean compositions is through use of a shallow depth of field. To my understanding, depth of field is basically what area away from the camera is in focus? How much of is it in focus? So with a shallow depth of field, which is a low number like 2.8, a narrow amount of what you're looking at is in focus. When you have that shallow depth of field, everything in the background kind of falls away and becomes blurry and soft and out of focus and looks nice. So in the Silas photo, you can see there's this graffiti strewn background that would look weird if it was in focus, but because I'm shooting at f2.8, just him and his bloody arm and all that stuff's in focus. And this has a nice dreamy quality. And so he really pops from the photo. A shallow depth of field is not good for shooting action because it's really hard to get the skater in focus, especially when they're moving fast. But for portraiture and other kinds of stuff, it can be very effective. This is a kind of an obvious thing, but a good way to get a good composition is to fill the frame. That means you get only what you need in the frame of your photo. Your buddy's bleeding, snot, whatever. Don't be content shooting him from across the parking lot. Get in there, you know. Make your subject the subject of your photo. And uh, if there's something in your photo that doesn't tell a part of the story or doesn't contribute to the composition, then move so it's not in the photo. On the flip side of that, sometimes you can get a great composition by stepping back. So for instance, this photo of Luan Alavera there was a million photographers. There's newspaper dudes, there's cops, there's security guards, there's chicks hanging out. There he is flying through the air and, and it makes a much more interesting photo because you get to see the people's reactions, you see the cops, you see a cute girl. It tells a lot more about this scene than just a nollie heel, a frontside nollie heel. Fisheye lens is the most popular lens in all of action sports. What it allows you to do is to get really close to your subject and it exaggerates some of the distances with its distortion. It's sort of cheating, but not really. But it allows you to get really, really close to the skater. In this case, like, you know, I was probably 16 inches away from him. When you have the skater really large in the frame, it helps with the composition. You know, if it's like, there's the guy, he's the main thing in the frame, that, that's super helpful. And so the fisheye lens is really good for getting close. Another way to achieve clean compositions um, is by using a long lens. What it allows you to do is focus on the skater while compressing the background. So in this case, you don't see all the details of this mountain. It's not distracting. Instead, it makes this neat backdrop and you've compressed, you know, this, which is 20 feet in front of Leo and that, which is like 16 miles behind Leo or whatever, you've compressed that into one photo and to make a clean composition. And if you look at it, you have, you have these lines too. Long lenses are not as used in skating because everyone gets so excited about the fisheye, but if you have the opportunity, definitely give it a shot. You can create a clean composition when you have a cluttered background of mixed light by using a combination of a slow shutter speed and panning. To do this, you need to shoot at a shutter speed slower than 125th, probably more like 160th or 130th. But you can get some really cool results and uh, you can clean up what would otherwise be a cluttered photo. He's nose blunt sliding this rail. You can see there's a bunch of trees, there's poles, there's all kinds of crap behind there. And so instead of like trying to time it where he's not lined up with the tree, where he's not the shish kebab with the pole, I used a slower shutter speed and panned. And now you get this cool looking blurred background. It looks like he's hauling balls and then he pops out better. All right, so now we're here at Arto's. We're gonna put some of these uh, principles to the test to get good compositions in our skateboard photos. A fisheye lens is typically 16 millimeters or, or wider. The distortion of the lens allows you to make the terrain look bigger and more exciting. We call it the uh, skater's helper. So by getting the fisheye lens and getting right on the lip, getting as close to Lance's front side air as I can, I try to fill the frame so Lance is as big in the frame as possible. So I have a really clean composition of the lip, 
and then Lance right there in the camera just like so if he's huge in your photo if your skater is really big in your photo usually that's going to clean it up and you're going to have a nice composition in that way. Uh, fish eye work? Another thing I did was to use this slow shutter speed pan technique. So in this case we've got trees above us with mixed light coming in and out and a lot of weird branches. It's pretty cluttered. So by slowing the shutter speed down to 60th of a second and panning, and what panning means is following the skater as he goes. That way the skater's in focus, the background is out of focus. So as you can see in these examples, with no panning and no slow shutter speed, you see him still and you have a darker background. In the panning example, David is frozen in action while the background is whirring behind him. So that's another way to clean up your uh, composition and make it look cool. All right, so those are some tips and tricks for getting good compositions. A good way to stay honest as a skate photographer is to skate yourself. So instead of sitting around being the fat guy with the camera, telling people what they should be doing, you gotta take your turns, you gotta get in there and eat some shit. It's the only way to keep honest and to not take these crazy tricks people are trying for granted. Other than that, uh, if you wanna be a skate photographer or any kind of photographer, you gotta shoot photos. A photographer takes pictures every single day. Don't put your camera in some weird case underneath a bunch of crap. Wear your camera around your neck and use it all day, every day. Shoot skating, shoot girls, shoot your friends, shoot everything. Just shoot pictures all the time. It doesn't matter if somebody else seems like they're more ahead of you, that they're cooler than you, they know some Photoshop trick. It doesn't matter. If you have your camera with you and you shoot photos every single day, you will be able to do it. That's it.